Great. And sorry, I mean, we are all in a hurry, but I don't again want to take more problem, but it was a very good session. And I think our presenters had prepared well, and we have been able to zero in on the framework that is being talked about, and I'm very glad that it has been brought around well. We heard Maulana Saab saying that, you know, he has learned uh, from Gandhi so much, the message of non-violence as a way of life. And uh, Professor Zahedi has raised some fundamental questions on peace. And Kausab has uh, actually said that you have no way of going back, and going back is not the solution. The mind is modern. We have to seek a fresh a next path that we have to do and we need scientific temperament which is one of the great finds of humanity it's very interesting the central point I think that was being made was that yes the framework is that the peace is gone because peace is achieved at three levels it's very clear at a personal level at interpersonal level and man with nature these are the three areas, peace is disturbed here in all the three areas and therefore if we are looking at the solutions, we have to look solutions for all these three levels. The only other point that I would like to add and saying that where Gandhi actually differed from others mostly was on the focus actually, the whole idea of modernism brought the idea of freedom, free thinking, liberty and that gave a lot of uh, opportunity for creativity in human being but unfortunately not all of it was a positive creativity killing or ending uh, violence and harmony but it actually led to creation of viol more violence in, in some sense mainly because some of the limitations that we should think about is one of them is that in the in the way of this scientific temperament I'm, I'm particularly bothered about a word which has been used in the in the old um, UNESCO report, which is professionalize. There is a problem. The professionalize means you distinguish between an individual behavior or an individual's private face versus public face. There is a problem, and I think we need to recognize this. And in our culture, especially in the culture in the, in the, you know, the East Asian cultures, we are very conscious about this. this. You can't have this kind of two faces. A teacher cannot be, a, you can't just have two faces. So there's no question of being professional. So I think this distinction we need to understand. And the problem has started, sir, uh, you may be slightly disagreeing. The whole, uh, the scientific temperament has ritual. I think this is where the link has been missed. And if we are able to get this into the framework where Gandhi said that, my life is my message and entire, the whole of my life is, has been a quest of truth. That was more experiential and spiritual for him. And I think that is how he said that let's focus on individual, control the individual by systems and systemic constraints. I think this is what we need to understand. And if we understand this, then our framework is complete. Because this also emphasizes that the quest for peace in totality, sustainable, may be more difficult. We all understand. But maybe it's more sustainable. So I think the, this was, in a way, uh, we can say that all the discussion was shown was a mix of all these attitudes and approaches. And I've just tried to, you know, uh, put this in a very short and succinct form, realizing the danger that I would have missed so many things. But unfortunately, the time is short, and uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm also a little sad that we were not able to sort of initiate any discussions or questions which would have actually come. But maybe as the time goes on, we learn and we will do better in next sessions. Thank you. In minutes, either we, those of you who want to attend the session on ABC of Harmony, collect on this hall. And those of you who are involved in the technical sessions or wish to listen to any of the technical sessions, collect in the three halls on the same campus. Thank you. At table. The audience is always like this. But the audience who normally attend the sessions are post lunch. They are all more interested in the subject. So I welcome all of you. And we have a formal and informal both session on the book Beyond the Dice. Yeah. To begin with the session, I think I'll ask Dr. Leo to come 
And excuse for my English and Russian accent. Uh, my paper will be uh, devoted uh, this book, uh, which uh, join uh, Global Harmony Association and uh, EOC uh, University uh, Gandhi Vidya Mandir uh, under leadership uh, Kanak Maldugar. Thank you very much for this great book. Uh, my team, the ABC of Harmony for World Peace, Harmony Civilization, at the Zimpton, at the start of the age of Harmony's environment uh, of the 21st century. This book uh, has many aspects, many dimensions. I will be uh, say about only one, uh, enlightenment in uh, harmonious enlightenment. This is epigraph our book, uh, uh, Dr. Abdul Kalam, President uh, of India, past, past, um, this work, this word, very uh, excellent, very exactly uh, expressed uh, the essence of this book. Uh, uh, people in world, many and very long uh, told about harmony. But uh, we uh, do not, do we uh, not have uh, the um, ABC of harmony. This uh, attempt is the first. No, 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 no. Uh, second, ABC of harmony opens the age of harmony's enlightenment of humanity to harmony civilization in the 21st century. Uh, global or word textbook uh, for harmony, ABC of harmony. Uh, and this textbook beginning new age, age harmonies uh, enlightenment. Uh, third, Global Harmony Association uh, announces the Opinion, uh, the age of harmony's enlightenment in India makes uh, it by the pioneer and world leader of the age which paves the beautiful uh, non-violent and uh, consensus way for a harmonious civilization of humanity in the 21st century uh, through, uh, through development of harmonious Mind and thinking of the, of the human. Не слышно? Спасибо. Thank you very much. Uh, at last, India will approve itself as the leader of world harmony if the government will create three international institutes uh, on the ABC, ABC of harmony theoretical basis. World Harmony Institute Harmony Academy based at ESA University and the Harmonies Enlightenment Foundation. Please. Abstract. Uh, it uh, published in books. I will not read it. Next. Okay. The ABC uh, Unica characteristic at substantial preferences. Uh, among the ABC uh, authors, um, yes, uh, one moment, uh, this book is collective. Uh, it uh, have uh, 76 
soldiers from 26 countries. Among these uh, authors, uh, as, as persons, uh, as uh, Dr. APG uh, Abdul Kalam, President of India, Norman Kurlan, Dr. Principal uh, Architect of President Reagan's Project Economic Justice, Professor Ernesto Kahan, Vice President of the Uh, Physicians Organization, which received the Nobel Peace Prize, uh, Professor uh, Frank Frankus Hotert, personal uh, representative of the United Nations um, President, uh, Kanak Mal Dugar, Chairman Gandhi Vidya Mandir, Chancellor ASAT Dimit University, uh, Honora, uh, Honorary President uh, Global Harmony Association. And, uh, and dozens of professors, doctors, and, and heads of international and national organization, which are the uh, pride of our ABC. ABC is the great collective world. Uh, okay. I go from end to beginning. I go from whole in parts. Uh, whole is tetranet. It is holistic, it harmonious thinking. This is general scheme. Uh, you, uh, its center is Uh, central uh, block, world, society, human eye. The beach of this block uh, distributed, uh, divided in uh, following blocks. Human Uh, world, uh, society, I. This uh, scheme uh, uh, was uh, published in the uh, our past book, Harmony Civilization. I have uh, <laughs> a few uh, uh, copies you can uh, see at me. Please. Harmonious enlightenment, building a harmonious mind capable to think the holistic harmony and harmonious whole. I emphasize this. Harmony is in nature holistic uh, phenomenon. Uh, It may be uh, uh, understood only uh, as uh, whole. Harmony is whole, whole is harmony. Harmony can exist in whole, whole can exist in harmony. This is uh, first the main uh, thesis of this book. Uh, if you will be say about Earth or our nature, we uh, will be divided seven spheres. Hydras, uh, Hydrosphere, uh, uh, lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere, biosphere, uh, nosphere, or anthropos or society, ionosphere, and cosmosphere. This is our world in whole. And how many this world uh, 
is consequences of uh, harmonious relation of these spheres. We can think harmony uh, nature in the whole only through this uh, very large parts. Mm. Okay. Fundamental, fundamental elements of the holistic social harmony. Uh, this is scheme uh, coordinates of the social space and time. Uh, fundamental elements of uh, harmony um, concerned only uh, three first uh, coordinates space, resources, processes, and structures. Uh, about time, I will not be uh, to say here, please. Uh, fundamental elements of the holistic social harmony uh, have uh, five clusters, five clusters or five groups. First group, resources. Second group, processes. Structures, classes of population, and human. Which uh, uh, cluster uh, have uh, four spheres, four elements. Resources uh, include uh, in itself, uh, people, information, organization, things. Processes include production, distribution, exchange, consumption, uh, structures, uh, social sphere, infosphere, org sphere, technosphere. Uh, classes, social class, info class, org class, techno class, uh, and human character, consciousness, will, and body. Please. Uh, these 20 elements uh, unite, uh, are united in the socionom, social genome on holistic social harmony. Uh, this is a short Definition for this social norm. Uh, the uh, ABC of harmony deals with two uh, genomes, the social genome of, of the society, which we will call uh, by means of a new term, social norm and the psychological psychological genome of the man, which may will be uh, another new term, psinom. We will, uh, will limit uh, to the first. Social norm of society is the social genome of any society rep uh, represented by the integral uh, summary of 16 fundamental uh, uh, elements of, uh, or spheres of social harmony that, uh, constitute, that constitute the deep uh, structure of society in general uh, and guarantee its stable life. Second, social harmony is the concept uh, of any sphere of society as a part within the whole and in regard to other spheres or parts, uh, etc. Please uh, uh, another, 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 okay. 
this is scheme, uh, this social norm. Uh, in uh, it includes uh, includes two uh, four uh, spheres: social sphere, infosphere, or sphere, technosphere. Uh, each sphere uh, has uh, each in, uh, each uh, sphere produce uh, produces. Uh, uh, itself resources social sphere produce uh, produce uh, the people uh, infosphere produced information org sphere produced uh, organization and technosphere uh, produced the things in all Masthab, all uh, different uh, kinds. Uh, this uh, social norm uh, in base have uh, the nature. This social spheres uh, coordinates. Uh, these uh, uh, natural spheres uh, uh, little hydro atmo ion bio no cosmospheres and this transition is ecolog ecological problems global ecological, uh, ecological problems problems harmony society and nature society uh, can uh, live only with harmony in nature only another way not for society uh, please notice This is, yeah, uh, I uh, call about this. Please. Yes. Harmony is education. Study of the ABC of harmony in all its parts. Uh, social norm of society uh, has 20 fundamental elements of harmony and they holistic harmonies that are not thinking. Uh, all this is the main subject and key content of harmonies education. Uh, if you will be say about uh, harmonies education, uh, we uh, will be uh, say about these 20 elements in, in uh, them uh, whole. Harmonious education or uh, uh, by definition is identical to value education as the, as the, uh, as the value of harmony <coughs> included itself as the organic parts, all values of humanity, freedom, equality, brotherhood, peace, love, justice, prosperity, humanism, etc. Each value can exist independently, but only in a uh, uh, limited way, only in harmony and from harmony, uh, all the values get fullness and flourishing. If we will uh, uh, talk about peace, uh, this is very short definition in this conception. 
Peace come, comes from harmony. Peace is social harmony. Peace builds from social harmony. Another way for global peace, for lasting peace, do not exist. Do not exist. In all human history, uh, uh, say about this. Uh, traditional peace, traditional peace culture, uh, when uh, uh, say, uh, if you want peace, you must prepare to war. This peace is militaristic peace. This peace based on war, on prepare to war, on industrial, industrial uh, military complex about uh, which uh, uh, very good uh, say uh, Charles Mercier. Uh, this is uh, uh, peace on health, on uh, weak, uh, uh, of the weak, uh, uh, temporal peace. Uh, peace uh, in this conception, in this uh, civilization, is the uh, prepare to new war. Peace is uh, continuum of war. In this conception, we, we will uh, nothing uh, think the peace. Uh, the ref uh, therefore, uh, harmonious education is, uh, in the same time, uh, is the beautiful education. Truth, beautiful education. Please. Harmonious education, the basis way of development of the harmonious holistic mind thinking from childhood. Uh, peace beginning from mind, from individual, from consciousness, each human. If you think in inner peace, when we will uh, can uh, be the peace in uh, social peace, uh, global peace, world peace. Uh, all va uh, think in uh, in head, in our consciousness, in our uh, mind. Uh, this is a uh, thing uh, which are uh, known to all. Okay. Uh, harmonious education. Of the main characteristic, the main road of harmonious enlightenment, uh, the key method of consciousness, beautiful and non-violent evolution of harmonious civilization, new civilization, in opposition, in opposition to uh, to all past civilization, can be only. Uh, non-violent only. All civilization in, in history was violent. New civilization, harmony civilization, can be only non-violent. Only consciousness, beautiful uh, evolution 
way for this uh, civilization. Another way for this civilization uh, do not exist. And uh, very uh, important uh, thing, teacher of harmonious education is the, uh, are the first actors in the progress of harmonious society and harmonious enlightenment. From you, from teachers, in first depended, depend, the uh, harmonious civilization, harmonious uh, sync, harmonious mind, uh, harmonious uh, society, and harmonious peace, trust, trust peace, harmonious peace. Another, in, in more uh, details, uh, you find uh, in our book, The ABC of Harmony. Okay. Thank, you for, thank you for your attention. Excuse me. You don't need the language. Thank you very much, Dr. Leo, for uh, explaining and passing on what exactly the work has been done to prepare this book. And this book definitely gives you an impact of when we talk about harmony, it covers the total aspects of not only the life, but the life's harmony with the nature. And I'll now invite Dr. Charles Bersika to come and give his comment on the book because he has been involved into monitoring the total work of the book all the time. So he was one of the most important guide of the journey. So let us hear. Including writing a book, there is always a purpose. We don't do it just for fun. The purpose of this book is to help teachers understand what it means to teach for peace. So far, all teachers in the world have taught the students to accumulate a certain subject area. The teacher of history will teach students what happened in the first century, third century, World War II. There was a war between Great Britain and Nazi Germany, and who won and who lost, just only facts. That's, the, that's, what the, that's how history has been taught to this very same day. Then the students memorize those facts, and they get a good grade, and everything is over. And uh, similarly, with the teaching of geography, the teacher teaches where Russia, India, and all other countries are, and the students memorize that. They can pinpoint them out. Everything is over. They get the grade, and they, and they go home. There is nothing that was used in any subject area so that the students may use that knowledge primarily to promote peace in their lifetime. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples of the traditional teachers, very briefly, and the teachers that we need to teach, instruct, so that they will enable themselves to begin to teach for, teach, for peace. Let me give you an example, say, of history. In history, we learn, as I told you, that World War II, it was a prim primarily a war between Germany and Great Britain, and then Japan became involved, and the United States and other countries, and that was over. The teacher of our peace goes a step further and asks the students, what happened to Germany when Germany lost the war? And let the students answer. You don't give them answers. Ruined. Not only that, but Great Britain that won the war, as a result, the British Empire collapsed. So in a war, everyone is a loser, no one a winner. The winner loses. The loser loses. Everyone is a loser. And the students begin to be asked, how can you become involved to prevent future wars, since everyone is going to lose? 
Let the students think and meditate. You don't give them answers in the teaching for peace. Let God give them the answer. Let them do their best and God will do the rest. And if they are serious enough, they will come with conclusions that will surprise the teacher many times because the teachers will learn from them. If the teacher is teaching geography, they teach them the map, the names of the countries and what have you. But the teacher, for, uh, the, 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 the peace teacher, goes a step forward and says, you know, what is this country here? Uh, that's Poland. And what is this country here? That's Germany. Now, do you know that before World War II started, this west part of Poland was Germany. And the people there were Germans, they spoke German, and they were referred to as Germans and traveled with a German passport. You know, today, because that part now is under Poland. Those people are called Poles. They travel with a Polish pos uh, passport and everyone treats them not as German, as Polish people. So, does it make sense to be proud of being German, of being a Russian, of being a Chinese, of being an Indian? Does that make sense? when the geography could change and the nationality changes also. And the teacher goes a step further and says, what you need to be proud of in life is to have a strong character and personality. An ability to be an instrument to solve problems, not only that you encounter, but that your friends and other people encounter as well. Because unless we do that, we will be like the blind, helping the blind, all falling into the same pit. And the students begin to realize that after all, what I need to do in order to be proud in my life is to have faith in myself, is to feel that I am committed to become a part of a positive and constructive society. And then the students, each in his own way, will begin to figure out plans for the future that one wants to pursue. And then questions arise, arise, and then the questions could be raised to the teachers. And the teachers could answer them, or the teacher could, when needed, consult through the internet or books or whatever, or people that she knows or he knows and are consulted to see how we can create a better and more constructive world. It's not enough to know what is good, unless we become a part of it, unless we begin to use it, unless we begin to produce results that are positive, constructive, and that everybody is benefiting from them. So this was primarily one of the purposes of the book, to enable teachers to open their mind from the title, when we read a book or something, we always fantasize what possibly we are going to read. At times we find out we were right in our guess. At times we find out we really were off guard. We, we, we were anything but right. So this is a, st a first step in the right direction of peace education. So that together, the future generation could create eventually a permanent and lasting peace. You know that they say that you cannot teach old dogs new tricks. The people in all governments in their 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, they are old dogs. How can we teach them to new tricks when they were born and raised in a culture of war? When unless you are strong and shrewd and plan and plot, so that if the enemy, in case you are attacked, you will fight back. This is the culture of war. Everything is negative and destructive. And once one is born in a place where everybody speaks Hindi, that's the only language you know. You cannot communicate in Chinese or German. And everybody know, who is grown in, in an environment where everybody speaks French, that's the only language you know. You cannot speak any other language but French. 
So if we are born in an environment that is full and degrade in the culture of war, and then we become members of the government, that's all we have in mind, the culture of war, planning and plotting so that we can fight the enemy back even in a more devastating way. That is the culture of war. So the only way we can do it is to create a new generation that there are still puppies growing up, still learning, and we teach them from history how they can become an adult, take over the community, take over the government, because let's say, in 50, do you know that in 50 to 60 years from now, about 70 to 80% of all the people in government today, they will be dead and gone. Or they will be so old, they will be with one foot in the grave. And who is going to take their place? Our children today. That are 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years old. Those are going to take their place. And we need to start preparing them for world responsibility right now, even when they are 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. We need, we need to start infiltrate into their mind and put the positive and constructive ideas so that once the time arrives, then they could implement anything that they have learned without any hindrance from the so-called, metaphorically speaking, old dogs. I am going to stop here because I think I did give you the message and the purpose of the book relative to helping teachers to become good peace teachers and peace workers. Thank you. Whenever Dr. Mercika speaks, I think it has a very strong message all the time that the war is supposed to be moved out of the blood of the people. The DNA is supposed to be changed somewhere. If you have a DNA which instigates a fight, it means there is no possibility of harmony in this world. Since morning, I think Dr. Masika is giving a very strong message that it needs to change the blood of the total world and each and every person. And if we change that DNA of the society and the whole universe, then only the possibility of harmony, which is... Uh, a dream which we could see and the most of the people who have been involved into the book and the people who are uh, present here have that dream that they could at least contribute to the change of this DNA. And Dr. Mercika, I think definitely we are in the part of the journey. Now, I have a pleasure to invite the person because editorial responsibility is the most difficult responsibility. The mo authors are very creative and they always feel that whatever they have contributed in the format of words in the pages is always very important. And the editor has a very difficult responsibility to restrict and take out the gist of what the author wants. And I invite the editor, uh, Mr. Haley Hebrimana, to share the experience of editorial responsibility, what he shouldered, and what exactly he could find while doing the editorial responsibility. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much. It's a great honor to me to stand here so that I may share with you my impression about this. Um, most valuable book, the ABC of, of Harmony. Um, I was thinking about um, the real value of this book and um, uh, two different persons in different domains. And um, I was thinking that everyone may benefit from um, insight given by this book starting from uh, sociologists, scientists, um, economists, managers, and uh, yeah, people involved in technology. So I may say that harmony is um, an overlapping concept. It's a concept which is touching at least all domains. Uh, sometimes people may say, oh, uh, this matter of harmony, this matter of peace is a business of sociologists, of psychologists, or religious people, but uh, it does not stop by there, but it extends to different domains. So uh, whether you are a mathematician, whether you are um, a technologist, whether you are a sociologist, and um, whether you are a religious person, 
you may get, you may benefit from um, this book, this uh, ABC, uh, as, as even the title is mentioning, ABC. It's uh, just like an introduction to all domains which are touched by um, this concept of peace and harmony. Yeah, uh, to me this is the first um, and even the most important value, uh, touching at least all domains of everyday life. Yeah, and uh, as teachers, whether I'm teaching linguistics, whether I'm teaching physics, whether I'm teaching mathematics, or I'm teaching economics, I may get from this ABC of uh, harmony. So um, I may say that this is um, it's a, a very important resource for all persons and uh, for all categories of people. That's number one. Um, number two, as regards my impression about, about this book, um, sometimes you may think that harmony or peace, um, sometimes we think about it as, as a dream, as uh, something that may not happen. But I think it may happen. As, as Leo said, uh, this book was written by a great number of co-authors and um, Having been able to compile their thoughts, their ideas, this is it's, uh, just a sign that this, uh, this harmony may, is, uh, may be a fact, may be turned into a fact. And um, if people are committed, really committed to, um, to work for peace, to work for harmony, I think they may succeed. And uh, to me, <clears throat> this is um, it's a proof that working together from different parts of the world, working for peace, for harmony is, is possible, quite 100% possible. Because uh, if people may combine their efforts to write such a book being in different parts of the world, if we are committed to work for peace, for harmony, from different parts of the world, from Africa, from Asia, from America, from Europe, from uh, whatever country, I, I think it's, um, this, it's, it, it may... Uh, it may happen, yeah. It's uh, not a matter of being only optimistic, but um, I, I'm basing on, on a fact. That's the reason why my optimism is, is, I may say, is supported by, by fact, which is uh, this book. Um, lastly, I, I'm not going to take so much time. Um, uh, in this book... Um, I, I'm going to introduce you a bit about about um, my idea, uh, which is written in this book. Um, I gave, I wrote an idea about African forms of social harmony. Yeah, that's the title of my of my excerpt, which is here. And um, I was thinking about how people's values, how some principles that different people have may contribute to, um, to building harmony and peace. And especially about teachers. Um, I was thinking also about how um, current teaching system may integrate or could integrate some traditional values. I'm calling them traditional even though they are not traditional as you can imagine. How can the current system of teaching, or how can current teachers could integrate um, values or some principles, ordinal principles of living, so that they may work for, to the benefit of, of peace and harmony. That's, it's in that way that I thought about African values. Um, I gave some five African values um, and um, I may say that the central point, the central meaning of, of those values are um, this, the concept of familyhood, the concept of working together, the concept of um, that a person is a person among others, and um, yeah, the concept of human dignity, they are found in different, in different countries and they have different names. For example, we have the concept of Ubuntu, we have the concept of Ujamaa, uh, 
We have the concept of Harambe, for example. We have the concept of Fiavanana. We have the concept of Ubupura, for example, in my country. We have the concept of Ibuanyi Danda in West Africa. All of those concepts, their meaning is, um, is about familyhood, is about a person living among other persons, the concept of human dignity, and um, all of those values or all of those principles, if they are really integrated in our education, our current education, I think, they may be of a great value to promoting peace and harmony. And um, I, I was inviting um, teachers uh, to come back to their roots and uh, look into those concepts and try to integrate them into uh, uh, what they are teaching. Because if people are taught two values, I think they may be... Um, they may, be, they may be transformed into effective actors of peace and, and harmony. Starting, I, I started from Africa because uh, it's where I live. It's um, the part that I could assume to know very well. But this may extend to other peoples because I'm sure that all peoples have principles, they have social values, they have um, yeah, they have this. It's uh, it's, it's just a, a, net, a network, and uh, all people have. And um, if they are integrated into their educational systems, I think it's uh, one way among others leading to peace and harmony. I thank you very much. Uh, it was just about my impression about this book. I was saying that this book is um, of great value, especially uh, it's a proof that people from different parts of the world, uh, people having different areas of specialization, different, um, people having different businesses may combine their efforts to the benefit of peace and harmony. Thank you very much. Tough. Uh, accumulating the book, and it is an expression of the whole world together. It's normally a tradition to ask the ladies to come first, but we have broken the tradition. An expert who is a professor in school education and also committed to the development of the education all the time. And she has been celebrated in her own country. So we need to give her a big hand as uh, with a national award in doing her work in school education. Welcome. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Thank you very much for giving the opportunity to join this great seminar. It's uh, very important for me because this subject is very dear to my heart. I'm uh, teaching for 33 years in a formal education system as a teacher. I am also uh, for 15 years the president of uh, foundation who, whose founder I am, a Children for Children, Children for Peace. And uh, for 10 years, I also work as in museum education. Yes, I was rewarded in 2010 as the best uh, school teacher of Romania. And somebody asked me here, why have they nominated you? And I said, because maybe I try to uh, open a way for a new style of education because uh, I combine the formal education with a non-formal education. I did education for peace since I started to educate people, to educate children, but... Uh, for 10 years, I developed a new type of education, education for culture, called museum education. And I involved 1,500 children every year in visiting museums. And I evolved, uh, I even took my PhD degree in museum education, being the first who opened this way of teaching. 
teaching and uh, um, making children to be to have a strong personality through culture through not only culture and uh, this could help them to fulfill maybe their needs their aspiration to make to be uh, able to accept the situation around you the reality around you because teacher education for peace and harmony it is more actual than ever nowadays uh, i start when we started to work in this foundation called children for children children for peace it was in a way a new concept but it wasn't such a need as it is now it's now only a need it's it's not only a need it's a necessity there are so many changes in the society there are so many changes in in our backgrounds that we really don't know how to go on further in europe for example uh, you will see a migration of young people from one country to another everybody seeking for a better world but this better world doesn't come so it is so difficult to do an education for peace only by teachers i think that here now maybe it could be a start for a new movement not a movement for peace, because we already have movement for peace, but movement for peace education, for edu education for peace. This could be a start and could be developed, uh, pointing not only on teachers and schools, pointing on families, because the first peace education is in the family. And this is another problem. Half of our school students live alone in Romania because the parents, either the mother or father, work in another country and they, left, they were left alone by their parents with their grandparents or only with their father or only with their mother. So the family is dangerous. That's a problem. This is the way we have to look on further. How to make these children have their inner peace. If we work on this inner peace, maybe we can have what we want. The second uh, steps of the peace values. But inside, it is a storm. Half of my class, I'm a, a, a class tutor, half of my class students are uh, only with one pa parent, monoparental families. When you, when you talk to them, when you try to help them, you see what a storm is in their life. So maybe we have to look very very seriously on this topic to see how we can cope how we can develop it in the society we live because the society we live now it's not the society of our parents i was blessed i had a very nice family i really had peace uh, in my childhood and in my life because it was created around me by the family first of all and then i carried on in schools and so on and i carried on when i was a teacher when first i start the first year of my teaching the first question in my mind was wow who do i have to do what the others do for me will i would would uh, will i be able to do such a great work because i was very happy during my childhood, during my students' time. And that's why I tried and I worked very hard as a teacher 
to do more than somebody said here. A teacher has to be a teacher not only in the class. I agree. I really agree. A teacher has to be a teacher all his life, all uh, uh, 24 hours from 24 hours. And then maybe you succeed to do something. So the principle of my work, for example, was that if I save a child, I save the world. So any time when a child was in, a ne in need, I did and I do all my best to save him or her because it is something. It is an, a, a